Hey guys, in this video today we're going to look at a new feature that just came out in the new release of Flogo Enterprise 2.4 and that's app metrics. So essentially what app metrics are is that once you deploy your application in your Flogo app, you're able to actually get information on the different activities within those flows itself. And that's very helpful because if let's say you have something, you build an application that's sensitive to latency or something like that, you'd be able to dig deep and see which activities may be taking more time than they should in terms of activating or being finished. So to start off, you'll need a Flogo project. In this case, I'm just using the bookstore example. And if I just look at book flows, essentially I just have a trigger for receive HTTP message and the path is just books ISBN. I have a log message that logs what that ISBN is. Then I have a REST invoke. So I invoke from a Google API source for different books. So I'm gonna provide the ISBN. It's gonna call upon that API and then I'm going to return the values of those. So I have the, the title, description, the published date. So I'm gonna um, just basically tell me exactly what those are for the, the ISBN I've entered. So once you've built your application, your project, like I said, it can be anything. It doesn't have to be what I have here. You just wanna build your binary. In this case, you just select exactly what, um, what type of operating system you wanna build it for. So I have a Mac, so I'll build it for Darwin. And I already built the binary previously, so I'm not gonna build it right now. So if on my terminal, you'll see that I have a, a binary called bookstore new Darwin AMD64. And so if you were gonna run this app normally, essentially you would just run the binary. So bookstore, you'd run that and then it would run fine. Um, but what we're interested in is seeing the different app metrics that are available. So the first thing you have to do is that you have to add two variables if you wanna start it up during the, the runtime session. So the first one is Flogo HTTP service port equals 777. And essentially what this is saying is telling Flogo that in your, in your computer, in your terminal, is telling it that look at this port. This is where the metrics are going to be coming from. So if you do some sort of curl onto this port um, and it's active, then you'll be able to get whatever metrics are available from the actual application or the flow itself. And so if you want to start the... Um, the metric collections right um, right at start time when you actually run the application you need to add flogo app metrics equals true and so this will make sure that it's it's start up um, if you don't add that it won't start it up it'll make the port available but you won't actually be able to retrieve metrics um, but let's say you actually accidentally forgot to add this one at start time there's actually a way that once the application has been started if you didn't add the flogo app metrics um, variable that you would actually be able to activate it and we'll go over that um, in a little bit and then the actual um, application itself hit run and you'll notice that once you started this application you'll see a couple new things that you wouldn't see if you just ran the application by itself and the first one is at metrics collector metrics collection is successfully started basically saying that um, it's now looking it'll be looking for different metrics and things like that and then management service is actually started on port 7777. So basically it's saying that use this port um, to actually access the different metrics. And because this is the HTTP message, we need, we're gonna need to make a call in order to actually see something. So before I do that, I just wanna show you what you would see before making a call. So if I just do a get on the uh, app metrics flow, so the different flows, notice that it just gives me the app name and the app version. So that's not very helpful. And the reason why you're only seeing this is because the flow itself hasn't been triggered yet. It hasn't, nothing has happened with it yet. So what we wanna do is in this other tab, I have a curl request for a specific ISBN. In this case, um, it's just a, a Java web services ISBN. And um, essentially, so if I go back here, um, you'll see that it said getting book data and it completed successfully. So now if we actually rerun this get request, we should see that now we've added this flows portion of it. And basically what it's saying is that um, in, in the project itself, you had one flow, it was completed successfully, and this is the average execution time um, and, and the, the actual name of the flow. So if you had multiple flows, what it would do, and it ran through multiple of them, it would show you all of them within here. And it would show you the different execution times and then the names, so you can drill deeper into it. So let's say you're interested in seeing, okay, why is this taking 592 milliseconds? Well, you can go in and you can drill down a little bit deeper and say, and this should be change up the flow. And basically what the, the structure of this should be, should be app metrics flow. So without an S, the name of the flow and then activities. If you hit enter, 
you'll see that it'll break it apart to the different activities within the flow itself. So in this case, it's once again telling you that it was to 589 um, milliseconds to execute, but then it breaks it down on the different, or in this case, the different tasks. So 589 all came from the rest invoke. If you look at the return and the log message, all of these had basically zero for the return and three for the log message. So those aren't things that are actually, they're not, those, aren't, those aren't slowing down your actual application itself. So looking at this, maybe you wanna be like, okay, I have to use a different API um, location or different API itself to I get a better response time, or maybe the, um, the way that I've routed or built my application isn't being efficient, so that's why it's taking a lot longer than I would want it to take. And if you notice, you go back to the terminal logs, you'll see that it'll give you a little message when that when that call has been made, that get request has been made, multiple response, writer header call. So nothing to worry about, it's just telling you that that get response has been made. So let me kill this. And so let me um, delete flowgo app metrics equals true, and then run this app. And so if you notice the difference is, you don't actually now see at the start I'm telling you that the metrics system has been started. It's just telling you this management port is on 7777, but it doesn't say it's the metric system has been started because we didn't specify it to be true. So let's say you started running your app like this and later on you decide, okay, I want to actually activate that. Um, what you could do is that you could do a post request on the actual application itself. So localhost 7777, and then it would be app metrics. And if you go back here, you'll see metrics collection has successfully started. So this is just a way where if if you, let's say, forget, or maybe at this beginning of the, app, the application lifetime, you didn't actually want to collect metrics, but now you want to, um, what you could do is that you could just turn it back on by just doing a post on app metrics um, on the URI. And if we actually run this, let's run this again. In this case, it's given me JK Rowland. Um, it tells me that it was successful, and if I go here, um, it actually pulls that for me as well. So I have no issues with that either. Um, so everything works fine, either starting out right when you start the application itself, or if you do a post afterwards, and then you get the metrics itself as well. Yeah, it's, so it's very useful to actually go in to be able to dig in deeper into your application, um, your different activities, your different flows, just to see exactly um, maybe, maybe you might have some issues or latency issues where you're trying to look into, or maybe you'll be specific things are failing and you want to actually dig a little deeper into finding out what's what activities are failing. So yeah, um, I hope this was helpful. There'll be a few more videos out on a couple new features of Flow Enterprise 2.4, so look out for those as well. Thank you.